I see you there. Hi, welcome to SourceFed. I'm Joe Beretta. The Summer Olympics just ended and some of you out there are like, yes! Finally! And others are like, no, what am I gonna do with my life? And that is the camp that I am in because I love the Olympics. And I love them because it's the spectacle of human achievement mixed with the extreme highs and lows of the human condition. We all love a good story, and the games are just an open book filled with all types of good reading. I can't talk about everything here, I'm a slightly biased spectator. Go America! But we're gonna recap it. Okay, first off, I don't care if you don't enjoy a single event and you hate the Olympics. There are just some things that happen that need to be seen. FK Zonderland's high bar routine? YouTube it. Jamaica versus USA? 4x100 meter relay final? Fastest? 4x100 meter relay ever. YouTube it. David Budai's gold medal dive? YouTube it. By YouTube, by the way. I mean, go to the NBC website because they got that stuff on lockdown. And all that stuff is gonna melt your face, but the London Olympics will go down as the Phelps and Bolt show. Because Michael Phelps and Usain Bolt obliterated the history books. Usain Bolt is the human jet engine. Before 2012, no man had won the 200 in back-to-back -back Olympics. And no man had double up on the 100 and 200 meter sprints twice in a row. He beat his own Olympic record in the 100 meter dash, and it was the second fastest time in history. Second only to himself. He's a perfect six for six in Olympic finals. And then there's Michael Phelps. Going into London, the talk revolved around Locke Day versus Phelps. Leaving London, Locke Day is internet famous and Michael Phelps is an Olympic god. He entered the games with 14 gold medals and he exited with 18 and clinches 22 overall in his big swimmer hands. He's the best Olympian ever. No, shut up. He is. He's the only Torpedo to win gold three times in one event and now he's retiring. That sucks. And apparently he's gonna go do a golfing reality show. Weird. But not everyone walked away happy. All these athletes make massive sacrifices for four years leading into these games, and the events are filled with as much heartache as they are elation. It was so hard to watch American 1500 meter runner Morgan Usini and 100 meter hurdler Lu Zhang walk away in defeat. They, they worked so hard and ah, it just hurts me in the heart place. And that fencer that was refused to leave in protest and she just sat there, oh wow. And let's not forget the importance of the Blade Runner, Oscar Pistorius, and the first ever Saudi Arabian women allowed to compete in the games ever. And the games are full of amazing moments right up to the last day. The Uganda National Anthem rang loud at the closing ceremonies because Stephen Kiprotich won the marathon in two hours, eight minutes, and one second. His gold was a pretty big upset, he beat two Kenyans, and his win marked the first Olympic medal for Uganda in the entire games. How, how cool is that? How cool! It's really cool. So, here's the final tally. After days of back and forth with China, the US leaves the games with 104 medals. China was second with 87, and Russia was third with 82. 85 nations won medals, and seven nations won their first medals ever. So like I said, the Olympics are the best, but if you don't like them, you at least have to admit the Olympic memes that we got are pretty sweet. We got Michaela's not impressed, the quote machine Ryan Lochte, and ziplining London Mayor Boris Johnson. Thanks, Olympics. So, as the Olympics close with a flurry of the Spice Girls, yay, and Russell Brand, boo, I personally look forward to in four years when the Olympic Games will be in Rio de Janeiro. But what about you guys? What was your favorite part of the Olympics? Let us know in the comments down below. And then do the like thing, the subscribe thing, and this annotation thing to take you to more stories. My name is Joe Beretta. Thanks for watching SourceFed.